Hey guys, if you have watched this series and you're like, Susie, but I'm just still not convinced that Canvas is what I need for my little kids, I think this video will convince you. Not only am I going to show you how to make an assignment, just really basic, but I'm going to give you a tour of specific grade by grade assignments that I've actually done with real little kids. These are not fake pretendo things. And then I'm also going to make sure that you know how to grab a copy of my assignments as inspiration or just to steal them. I, I know Alice Keeler has hashtag steal edu. I'm for it. So stay tuned for some really practical advice on how little kids can do their work in Canvas. If you already know how to make an assignment, feel free to skip ahead in the video. Uh, this is just to make sure everybody's on the same page. But if you're starting Canvas for the beginning with your littles, you may be nervous too. So if you want to make an assignment, I'm always going to recommend you start at modules. I'm actually at modules right now, but I'm just clicking it so you'll see. Modules, you can go back and watch a full video on that or like the organizational framework of Canvas. And so I'm in a module. I've probably named it after the week or something. Not going to go back into that, but I am going to click this black plus and add an assignment that's on the drop down right there. If I already had it created, I could pick it, but I'm gonna show you from scratch. So I'm gonna do a new assignment. I'm gonna call it assignment two. I give really fancy names on these demo videos. And then you can decide if you want to indent or not. That's just really how the module is visually laid out. I'm just gonna leave it for now. Now I have not put anything in that assignment. That's why it's not published. I see this Ghostbuster sign over here and I need to click on it to get to edit mode. So if I hover and click, I'll see the option to edit, add a rubric, and all that jazz. Rubrics are for another day, another dollar. Um, but anyway, when I get into the assignment, I can write whatever directions I want up here, and I have all the rich text editor. Um, I have a video coming out that if you're watching these out of order, there's a video that's going to talk about how to use the audio and video feature if you need to actually enhance your directions with that. You can link to things. I'm not going to spend too much time on all these buttons up here. I just want to show you basically I went to a module, created an assignment, now I'm in editing mode. I come down, I do how many points it is. My heart always says 100, but you're the boss of you and your district. Your groups are your categories. How do you wanna display your grade? Those are all gonna be probably like school-based or district-based decisions. Um, but I just wanted to spend time on a couple options down here. First of all, what do you want kids to give back to you? I'm going to reinforce that you don't just accept a whole bunch of pieces of paper and then you have to use Canvas as a grade book. No, what I'm gonna show you today is Kids can actually receive work and submit work back to you in Canvas. Some of it can auto grade, or at the least, you can use Speed Grader and leave comments and everything you want to add. So see if there's anything that used to be on paper that you could now do online. Canvas can make that possible. So I'm going to change this from no submission to online. There are lots of options there, but I'm just going to spend time on that. You can check all the boxes if you want. You can check none of the boxes. Basically, what am I going to ask my kids to do? Are they going to be typing in a box? I'm going to show you some examples of that. Are they going to need to submit a link to me? Like maybe they've made a sway or something that they need to give to me. Um, do I need them to record some, something back to me? Again, separate video on media and audio recording. Stay tuned for that. And then um, the other thing is, do you want them to upload a file to you? So you can check all of those. It won't hurt anything. Or you can check just whatever one you want them to do. I'm going to totally skip these next three pieces. Those are more advanced features that we don't need right now. And then you just have to decide who to assign it to, a particular kid, a particular section in your class. If you're teaching littles, you probably teach everyone, but you can just send this to one particular kid if you need to. And then what's my due date? We're going to say it's due tomorrow. I don't usually fill in available from until, and here's why. If you do available from, it will not unlock until that date. Now that may be helpful for those of you who plan ahead. Um, but I hardly ever fill out the until because that one locks it down completely from anyone being able to submit. If you submit late, I still want you to submit it online and then I will adjust the grade as needed. In elementary school, you probably don't even do anything about if it's late. So just spare yourself the trouble and remove these available from and until. Okay, when I'm ready, I save or save and publish. I'm just going to, I'll go ahead and publish. Nobody's in this course anyway. And that is how you create a basic assignment. I'm going to show you now some sample assignments in the next snippet. If you've been watching my whole video series, which again, I keep saying that there's a whole playlist for these. I've, uh, this is video number seven now out of the nine video series. I'm going to release a bonus video this week. Ba -ba 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 bonus. <laughs> if you've been watching, then you'll see the, I keep coming back to the same course. It's called Canvas for Littles. You can grab it out of the commons and I'm going to show you that on the next slide. Um, but I just want to give you a quick tour. I have for basically kindergarten, first, and second grade, I have 
three or four assignments for each one that show you different ways that you can use Canvas to have kids do work directly here. Not doing it somewhere else and sending it to you or writing it on paper and scanning it. Not you using Canvas simply as a grade book, but kids do their work here and you see it here. I want you to notice before I move on and actually show you some of these assignments that you're going to see different types of icons. I've done discussions with little kids. I've done assignments with little kids. Um, and then I've actually embedded something on a page for little kids. So I'm going to give you as quick a tour as I can. If I talk too fast, that's okay. You'll be able to go back and look at these. This one, um, we recorded ourselves. And I want to say, when I say we, I stand on the shoulders of giants. I, I've worked with real teachers in Canvas for the last several years um, in several different counties all over the country, pretty much. And so um, as I have come up with these ideas, they were real assignments that we did with real kids. So I stand on the shoulders of giants, but we, in collaboration with teachers of this grade, we talked about how you probably want to record your directions audio. Again, I have a video coming out about that. And so this little bubble up here that's a blue square would actually read these directions to the students. And then we embedded something from Storyline Online. Kids would actually come in, they would answer the questions in a discussion. And what's cool about a discussion is they don't see what other kids wrote until after they write something. And they also get to give each other likes, which is a lot of fun for little kids. This one was a simple text box. We took a word problem and the kids were going to answer in a text box. So I guess I should go into this in student view. Let me do that so that you can, um, so that you can see what it looks like for the kiddos. You know, I think of things as I go. <laughs> what you'll like about me, hopefully, is that I'm not fancy. I try to be practical. So they would submit the assignment and it would give them then a text box to type in. Okay, so we're going to not submit that. We're going to leave anyway. Another one for kindergarten, would you rather be the plants or the, or the roots or the stem of a plant and give reasons? That, again, was, I, I believe, yeah, text entry box, same as the previous one. Looking at first grade assignments, they talked about digraphs, which I got to learn my first grade lessons because I didn't know what digraphs were. I had never taught first grade. And so, again, this was a text box entry that they got to type into. Another first grade, this was a cool one. We took Office Forms and put it into Canvas. So you can embed. Again, I love Office 365 if you watch my other videos. Uh, and so I love when those tools come together. But this would work also with a Google Form. We made a form, and this form should have pictures on it. I don't want you to, to uh, stare with me as my internet has issues. But basically, this is a picture of a bus, and the kids would have to match Rather than just guessing a B word, we put three that were pretty close together, and they would continue doing that. So that was a form, and so those results would actually go into office instead. And then into second grade, you saw this one earlier in uh, this video, another video, I've lost track now. But anyway, would you rather be a pine tree in the fall or spring and why? That one was a discussion. So again, they reply, and then they see other kids' answers as they reply. And those are your samples. So I hope that's given you some one, and I love that this says this gift no longer exists. I hope that's given you some examples of what you can practically do in Canvas. And now I'm gonna show you where to grab all those resources to steal them or modify them. I'm here in Free for Teachers Canvas and I can still search the commons. I did have somebody reach out to me and say their district didn't have commons turned on. You can always make a free account and try to grab the stuff out of the commons there if it's a feature that's not turned on. But to get the resources I shared today, you're going to click commons on the left toolbar in Canvas. You're going to type my name. Now, my name has to be spelled right. <laughs> I used to be an English teacher, so let me just say, if you spell it wrong, I can't help you to find the resources. I've shared a bunch of stuff, and, and you're looking for the icon that looks like this. Canvas and Office 365 for Littles. This is actually a fuller course that I created that... You know, I teach sometimes at conferences, but when you click that, you will be able to download all the things you want, including the one that says it has a megaphone and says announcements, assignments, and this has all those pieces. And if you've been looking for other information from other videos I've shared, it's pretty much all in this same course. I'm just breaking it down for you in video form. So that's how you can find my stuff. You would probably want to make a, just a generic course to put it in so you don't junk up a real course and then you can move it over. But you would just import or download it into whatever course. I hope this helps. Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them. But if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you want to gamify, playlist for that. And all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below.
If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Susie Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.